So the GTX 1650 has been released and I've seen the reviews, I'm yet to do my own because the cards were sent so far after NDA was lifted that I just haven't had time to do a proper review yet, that'll be coming. But I did watch Bitwit's video where he coupled it with an OEM system and although he had some troubles, he did eventually get it working and it was an option if you were looking to get into PC gaming. But since 2014 and when the 750 Ti launched, a lot of those options for sort of going with OEMs can present problems. There are a lot of boards out there that just simply won't support the 750 Ti, the 1050 Ti, or the 1650. But since 2014 as well, things have changed big time where a lot of people aren't even looking for an OEM system. They're just simply too ugly. Aesthetics is playing a big role. And honestly, you can get aesthetics for real cheap on a build nowadays, as well as power supplies being relatively inexpensive. Now, one thing I will critique about the 1650 straight away though, is where is the low profile option? I've looked around everywhere and I can't see one maker that's made the thinner version that would go in some of those OEMs that are going out really cheap. But today I'm gonna try and find a purpose for this card and that is coupling it with the recent budget combo I got for 120 bucks. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'll put the link up here. Where an actual big benefit of this system which had a six core Xeon was that it was using under 90 watts from the wall and also coupled it with the GTX 1660 and the performance was surprisingly really good. So let's chuck this in. We're also gonna chuck in an RX 570 and see what performance we can get for the wattage. Do you sometimes want to be camouflaged and you like fancy RGB lights, but you still want good components on board your motherboard? Well, if so, the Z390, still legend from ASRock, has you covered. Coming in with a decent price point too, it's one for a serious contender for someone looking to get on the Intel 9th gen chips. Links in description below. So what we've got now is three different cards here, two GTX 1650s, one of them being the Galax version, the other being the no PCIe 6 pin gigabyte edition too. So if anything, we're gonna see which of these uses lower power compared to one another. Honestly, my bet is on the Galax card because in the last year, all the cards they've sent through here have been very power efficient. And then we've got the RX 570, which I picked up on a deal for 80 Aussie dollars. This is really good value for money. <laughs> Practically not gonna get much better than this considering these are on the used market everywhere and even brand new, they're really good price performance. And that's been the biggest detriment to the 1650 so far is that this exists and the price for it is really inexpensive. But with that aside, let's put these three cards through this little rig right here and see how much power they use for what performance numbers they give out. So we just now finished the testing with three different graphics cards, testing out uh, Apex Legends as well as Monster Hunter World, which from the previous video, you guys requested that I test this as it was CPU intensive. And then we also tested out a Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And the numbers are as expected. The RX 570 is coming well ahead of the GTX 1650. It is doing so though on average with about 80 to 85 watts more power consumption depending on the benchmark. Now the difference between the Gigabyte and the Galax card surprisingly was virtually nothing both across the numbers and the power consumption. So I guess on this particular Gigabyte model with no PCIe uh, 6 pin requirement, and same with the Galax card, they have tuned these VBiases for efficiency as there are some other models out there that do require the six pin and I'm guessing they use a little bit more power than these two cards otherwise would. Now in terms of measuring both these cards up, they come just under 200 mil in length. So you will need to accommodate for that. But one thing I can't get my head around is just, there is no low profile option for either of these cards. And now with the 1050 Ti, we did see that low profile option and that gives us the option to then put it in some of these small form factor uh, sleepers as you otherwise would know them as if you put this card inside because the performance is pretty decent. I mean, 1080p high settings across Shadow of the Tomb Raider 
uh, getting 50 FPS and then moving over to Apex Legends, again, high settings, uh, getting 60 FPS and having good 1%, 0.1% lows is nothing to laugh at as well as uh, Monster Hunter World playing quite well. I mean, if you drop the settings down to say a blend of high and medium, on the other two titles, you will get that 60 FPS figure, and you'll do so with a whole power consumption coming under 150 watts. So it'll pretty much run with any single power supply out there. Uh, and this combination, I guess, the only person it would be good for is someone who is, uh, maybe wants to save the environment, uh, but has an addiction to PC gaming. But as we can see with the numbers here with the RX 570, that thing is coming with more performance. It's currently cheaper both on the new market and the used market. I mean, with the used market, you can pick these things up for next to nothing. I mean, I got one for about 60 USD. Well, I actually got quite a few for 60 USD, not just one. And at this price, they're phenomenal value for money. And I mean, is that 80 watts uh, worth it? I mean, most gamers on average, I'd say, would game for about three to four hours a day. Some would game a lot more, some would game a lot less. So I'm guessing if you're a World of Warcraft addict, and I guess you play this game 16 hours a day, then that power consumption could add up quite quickly and you could save some money actually in the long term going with the 1650 of an RX 570, but it would take a while. I mean, you'd have to do the math on how much you pay for power and where you are in the world. But in Australia, uh, per kilowatt hour, it is a little bit expensive. But again, that price difference, 60 USD on the used market for an RX 570, which is what I got it for, versus 150 USD on the new market for a 1650, that's a big price difference. And uh, also coupled with the fact that uh, there's no low profile option, it's kind of getting a little bit hard to see where the 1650 is sort of slotting in because the 1660 Ti, even though it costs more, is using GDDR6. So in ways, it's actually a more efficient card in the total power performance arguments. There's also the argument that Turing cores don't perform a whole lot better than Pascal cores, and you're only getting just over 100 CUDA cores uh, with the uh, 1650 versus the 1050 Ti, and you're still getting four gigabytes of VRAM and uh, 14 nanometer down to 12 nanometer. So not a whole lot has changed in that time since when the 1050 Ti was released and the 1650 came out. So I would have liked to have seen a bit more out of this graphics card, but I guess we'll have to wait for Nvidia to drop down to seven nanometer, as well as to see what AMD does with their Navi solution uh, to see if it can sort of compete uh, what for what with these performance numbers because they are pretty good. It's just that the RX 570 at its uh, price performance argument is currently offering more and that's already been out for quite some time. So all the arguments that you guys have heard currently, um, they pretty much ring true. I personally think for how long it's been since the 1050 Ti was released and since this is released, I am not that impressed at all. With that said, I will be adding a lot more graphics cards into the mix, throwing it onto the 9900K test bench, and then giving you guys a full-fledged review for the 1650 Galax cards. So stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit that like button. If there's any other comments or any other opinions you got, be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. Love reading them as always. And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.